the self-driving car. It's a hot topic, the subject of so many appropriately trepidatious episodes of forward-thinking television shows, from CSI Cyber to NCIS to Black Mirror, all the way to South Park. But is the self-driving car a menace, our savior, our future robot overlord, or something in between? Right now, we're still figuring out how much of a role the autonomous car will have in our future and working out the kinks. Today, we'll be talking about self-driving cars. What are they? Where do they come from? And most importantly, what if they start killing people? <coughs> I mean, who's to blame when an autonomous car kills? And are they going to kill us all, Terminator style? Ah! Hmm. Let's take a look. First off, what is it? Well, according to our trusty friend Wikipedia, an autonomous or self-driving car is a vehicle that is capable of sensing its environment and navigating without human input. That's right, they're cars that don't need us anymore. These vehicles use advanced control systems and a variety of technological methods to sense their surroundings and determine the best course of action for the car. Whether that's which route to take to avoid traffic, or whether to swerve for an old man crossing the street, or get the 10 points for hitting him. Haha, <laughs> I joke. Although one thing we'll talk about a bit later is the very real possibilities of having a computer decide how to proceed in a no-win situation where someone is going to get injured or killed. Anywho, self-driving cars use tools like radar, GPS, odometry, stereo vision, and ultrasonic sensors, if you know what any of those words mean, to perceive and interpret their surroundings. The argument in favor of these self-motivated voitures include hypothetical reductions in traffic collisions, enhanced mobility for the elderly, disabled, or otherwise non-driving population, and better overall traffic flow and use of infrastructure, assuming the cars are able to access and understand traffic patterns. In theory, they would make our lives easier by making it easier to share vehicles, reducing the need for parking spaces, and reducing human error on the roads. You could be drunk as a skunk and still get home, if only your car could drive. A theory I believe one of my uncles also posited in a field in the 1980s. Right now, various types of driverless cars have been developed and tested by such heavy hitters as Google, BMW, Nissan, Ford General Motors, Delphi, Tesla, Mercedes-Benz, and Bosch. No, not that one. Right, that makes more sense. But what if they start killing us? Well, that would be a concern only in the higher levels of automation. Let me explain. There are five levels of automation in driving, developed in 2014 by SAE International. Zero means no automation at all. The human driving is completely in control full time. Level one is driver assistance, where a driver assistance system helps with the execution of steering, acceleration, and deceleration only, and with the expectation that the human driver is, by and large, in charge of driving. Level two is partial automation, where the driver assistance system is more in control of steering, acceleration, and deceleration, using information about the driving environment, but where the human driver is still in charge of monitoring the driving environment and is expected to be present and capable as a fallback for all driving tasks. Level three, conditional automation, moves the monitoring of the driving environment more into the bucket of the automated driving system, with the human driver there to respond when the system requests that they intervene. Level four, high automation, means that the system may request that a human driver intervene, but should be able to fully function on its own, even if the human driver does not respond appropriately, and the fifth level. Full automation expects that the automated driving system is capable of all driving tasks under all roadway and environmental conditions that could be managed by a human driver. In the fifth level, the human becomes irrelevant, and then maybe they kill us all. Well, we'll see. Because the technology is, as of now, nowhere near perfect, we have rules in place about using and testing these machines. On public roads, a driver is still required to make sure the vehicle is functioning properly and to be there to take over as needed. But those precautions haven't been enough. Autonomous cars have already made the news for a variety of incidents, including at least four fatalities to date, three of which have been the drivers meant to watch over the self-driving car though not the driver's fault, generally, and one being a woman who was struck on the road by a refitted Volvo being run by Uber. That's right, the robot revolution has already begun. Specifically, in March of 2018, 49-year-old Elaine Herzberg of Tempe, Arizona became the first pedestrian to be killed by a self-driving car in the USA. You can see video of the incident online if you have a strong stomach for that sort of thing. I don't. Following the incident, Doug Ducey, the governor of Arizona and former CEO of Cold Stone Creamery, for all you creamheads out there, suspended Uber's ability to test and operate the automated vehicles in Arizona. 
Said Governor Ducey, as governor, my top priority is public safety. Improving public safety has always been the emphasis of Arizona's approach to autonomous vehicle testing, and my expectation is that public safety is also the top priority for all who operate this technology in the state of Arizona. The incident that took place on March 18th is an unquestionable failure to comply with this expectation. So what happened there? A bunch of things, honestly. It seems like it was no one person or thing's fault. See, future robot overlords? I am magnanimous in my praise of you. But seriously, it was dark and Miss Herzberg was crossing outside of a crosswalk on a road with a 45 mile per hour speed limit. A post-mortem toxicology report showed that she had marijuana and methamphetamine in her system. So if it had been a human driver, she still would have come pretty much out of nowhere. But the crash should nonetheless have been preventable. Federal investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB as their friends call them, found that a lane could have been visible or detected six seconds before the collision, which with a human eye would have been enough time to stop. Unfortunately, under those conditions, the vehicle needed to be 1.3 seconds away to determine emergency braking was required, and by the time they were 1.3 seconds away, it was too late to stop. So that might have been it, but there were other possible faults with Uber software and tech too. What? Uber not doing what's best for humanity and prioritizing profit over people? Unheard of, I know. Brad Templeton of self-driving tech development company Waymo and early consultant on Google self-driving cars said to SFGate, there is no question the laser should have seen her. I know the technology is better than that, so I do feel that it must be Uber's failure. Harsh words, Templeton. And self-driving car expert and Gardner research director Michael Ramsey added, the video clearly shows a complete failure of the system to recognize an obviously seen person who is visible for quite some distance in the frame. Uber has some serious explaining to do about why this person wasn't seen and why the system didn't engage. Some even theorize that cars being programmed to follow traffic rules might expect a pedestrian to give them the right of way when it was legally theirs, though that doesn't seem to have been the case here. It is the sort of thing that one has to consider in building and refining this technology. You know, to prevent the autonomous cars from rising up and killing us all. But wait, I hear you crying. It sounds like a driver could have seen her and stopped the car and, and you said everyone's required to have a driver in their self-driving car. You're absolutely right. And there was a driver in the car. Uber driver Rafaela Vasquez was there to watch over the car led joyride. Unfortunately, her phone records and cameras inside the car heavily suggest that she was watching NBC's hit series The Voice in the minutes leading up to the collision. Uber reached an undisclosed settlement with the husband and daughter of Mrs. Herzberg out of court and her parents and son also retained a lawyer. As you can guess from all that, the question of who is liable in an accident involving a self-driving car can be tough. Most of the laws around road traffic are based on the fundamental concept that drivers are always fully in control and responsible for the behavior of their vehicle in traffic. But with self-driving cars, and particularly considering there are different levels of autonomy, we'll have to work out new legislation. In particular, some worry that companies like Uber, that regularly skirt the limits of their legal obligations, might finagle ways to try and avoid being held liable when responsibility is shared or wherever it can feasibly be passed off. In this case, a pedestrian crossed illegally, a driver depended on a self-driving car to alert her to problems, and the car and company depended on the driver to watch over it and take control if the vehicle didn't function as expected. Everyone failed each other. The legal side of it all may not be clear until self-driving cars become much more prevalent, but before that happens, we have bigger questions to grapple with, like how do we program the robots to not want to kill people, and some other stuff. For example, privacy issues arising from what could essentially amount to mass surveillance. The possibility that your autonomous car software could get hacked, that would be bad. The massive job losses for people who are currently professional drivers of various sorts. The loss of the skill of driving, which could hypothetically result ultimately in a lack of independence. And the power it would put in the hands of the already powerful global conglomerates that control much of the world's AI capacity. But the biggest question of all is the one I mentioned earlier. Will the robots kill? Well, we'd program them on a basic level to follow the rules of the road, and realistically, our AI technology isn't that close to sentience yet, but we do have to decide on a moral code for the software of the self-driving car. It's a classic ethics question. Basically, the trolley problem for all you ethics fans out there. The essence of the trolley question is this. If you're the driver of a runaway train, you're moving forward towards five people working on the tracks. There's a lever next to you that you can pull to change tracks. On the secondary track, there's only one person. Whichever track you stay on, whoever is on it will surely be killed. Do you do nothing 
or do you pull the lever? There are arguments for each side. Pulling the lever means less total loss of life, but by pulling the lever, do you become morally responsible for the deaths? Would doing nothing make you responsible? Or does being there at all give you a moral obligation to participate? Basically, do you kill one man to save five? Let's apply it to self-driving cars. Can the car swerve, knowing that means it'll kill someone if it means it'll save five other people? What if killing you inside the car is the only way to save five people outside the car? How should the technology prioritize life? Wikipedia, my best friend, summed this up well. First, what moral basis would be used by an automated vehicle to make decisions? Second, how could those be translated into software code? Sound off in the comments section below to let me know what you think about that conundrum. Anyway, ultimately, the tech, at least as it stands now, would likely not even have the sophistication to realize it was facing a moral dilemma and act appropriately. But the human programmers of the software have to make decisions about how it should react to different situations, teaching the AI how to respond to stimuli it might face on the road. This is compounded by the likelihood that it'll be a while before your car actually knows what it's looking at, as opposed to just recognizing that something is there and moving. Would you kill five raccoons to save one child? Hmm, is the child annoying or is it a nice child? That said, we may not have that much longer to figure it all out. According to Elon Musk, a man best known, of course, for his cameo in 2005 film, Thank You For Smoking, modern Teslas already have everything inside them hardware-wise, to self-drive as soon as Tesla has the software perfected and approved, which they hope will be by the end of 2019. In the meantime, your Tesla is in the nefariously named shadow mode, you know, just quietly sending your data back to Tesla to help them perfect their software. They're like sleeper cells, just waiting to be awoken so they can chauffeur you to your doom, or to your weekly trivia night. Either way, in the meantime, at the very least, impending doom or otherwise, maybe your idiot car can finally learn to parallel park for you so you won't have to worry about that anymore. If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Hit that bell icon as well so you're more likely to get notified of our noble answers to your burning questions. Also, if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to tell me in the comments section down below. And to keep filling your brain with regal knowledge, check out these videos here. They're magnificent.